Hey guys, today I'm just going to be doing a breakdown on this and how I achieved this mixed media style uh, within DaVinci Resolve. So first of all, I'm going to highlight everything and just make sure they are not visible. I'm going to quickly run through everything uh, and hopefully you learn a bit on the way. So first of all, um, I have these ink splatters here. Um, I just added a luma key and on that luma key you can remove the white. Um, I did the same for this bit as well. And then within the uh, luma key, I made sure my background was set to foreground and the luma key was set to alpha. My background was just composed of two images. So I got this purple sky and this uh, sort of blue water. Um, and a quick tip, uh, if you don't want to jump into fusion and mess around with the uh, sort of the stretching and the transform nodes, you can just come along, uncheck this and you can stretch this and change the pitch and the yaw um, and sort of make it into this flat landscape, which I did. Once I've done that, I added these colors and these drawings. Um, they're originally PNGs. Um, I don't think they were PNGs actually, they were just sort of white images. Yeah, I could have used the composite modes, but I opted to use a Luma key to cut out uh, the color, add a false color to change, and then add a camera shape to give it that floating effect. And I just duplicated this and all of them. If you want to have a look at my camera shake settings, which you can find in OpenFX on DaVinci Resolve, it's just the motion scale, which is sort of around 0.4 and the speed scale quite low. So you get this sort of floaty um, effect, which kind of sold uh, what I was going for. I then added the text, which was the squabble squabble. Um, you can see here, I've just keyframed the right on, so it animates in. Once I've done that, I added these lines. And now what I do with the lines is I came into Fusion, I added a grid, um, and these are my grid settings, so I column cells to one, major line spacing zero, and you can copy these here, I won't go through them all. And then I came into here, right click, modify with, uh, and added a perturb. There's already, obviously already a perturb on here. I come to modifiers, and these are my settings. I up the strength, the wobble, and the speed down a little bit, and I kind of got this randomized line, um, which emulates like a line you'd see on a, on a, you know, an old notepad or something. Once I'd done that, I added this texture and this really filled in everything. Um, and this was set to linear burn. Um, and this kind of gave me my notepad texture instead of just being that white solid color. I wanted something that looked a little more uh, realistic. I then added this guy um, or this texture, sorry, which is just this. And this is just on a simple screen composite mode. Once I'd done that, I added my characters. Um, the characters I used Magic Mask, and then I applied my Bluetooth Mixed Media tool. Um, so when you apply the Bluetooth Mixed Media tool, you can start to really develop uh, the halftone textures and mess around with everything. I also come in and change the colors of them just to blend in with that teal, orange, and blue look. Um, you know, and start to really shape the color scheme and tie everything in. Um, sometimes when you're compositing different things from videos that have already been made, uh, you should mess around with the colors and try to get everything to match um, and build into your color scheme rather than leaving things quite separate. And I think on a mixed media tool um, or mixed media style process, you can achieve this quite easily just by coming into the color panel um, and using the color dials such as the gain and the gamma and the contrast. Once I'd done that, I had just, um, I added this sort of other bit here um, to hide the flash and I did similar what we did with the ink splatters I made the bottom alpha which is Kendrick I made the foreground um, my color scheme I then come on top and duplicated that and made that screen and then we got the kind of the nice texture inside of the Kendrick sort of cut out and then my final piece was just bringing everything together. And I've done this quite a lot on my other tutorials is I'll add a Gaussian blur, a uh, contrast, up the contrast and add a film grain. And that brings everything together. And you've kind of got this embedded film grain that works really nicely with the effect. Um, and that's pretty much it, a real quick breakdown. You may have learned something, I hope you did. Um, if you want me to expand on this and do a step-by-step -step tutorial, please comment, please like, and please subscribe. But um, other than that, have a good one. Peace.
And if you're using DaVinci Resolve, guys, check out the full collection of my editing plugins at Bluetooth.com. These tools seriously level up your workflow. From CRT, VHS, and animated titles, I've got you covered.